Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to another vacuum cleaner demonstration video. Today we're testing the Hoover Smart Pets bagless upright vacuum cleaner. This is priced at the budget end of the market, ranging from about £80, although it is possible to pick it up for less than £40, um, which is what this one cost me, £39.50, from Tesco Direct, but the price may have gone up since making this video. Well, I'm going to put it through its paces and we're going to start by seeing how it is on hard floors. So on this kitchen floor, uh, we've had a bit of a mess made and it's all the stuff you would find on a kitchen floor. So I've spilled some sugar, there's the uh, contents of the toaster crumb tray and there's some rice and there's also some dried mud and other bits and pieces that are normally on this floor. So, who would recommend? on hard floor surfaces you use this setting. So I'm going to turn the dial to short carpet and hard floor. Now this is the first time this cleaner is being used so I expect it will be quite noisy especially on a hard floor but we'll just see if it manages to pick this mess up without scattering it all over the place because unlike some cleaners the brush continues to rotate when you're cleaning hard floors. So what we'll do first is release the cable and plug the cleaner in. There's a foot operated on off switch that side and the handle release is that side. So we'll just do one path through and just see what it does. Well, it's sort of cleaned, there is a clean path, although there was a lot of rice particles, especially being flicked back by the brush. There was nothing to stop them from being flicked back, but I didn't expect it to be great on hard floors. You really need a cleaner that you can turn the brush roll off for hard floor cleaning. But anyway, we'll, we'll continue cleaning, we'll finish this job, and uh, then we'll get on to the next job. Well, I've not finished cleaning, but all this mess here wasn't here before. The cleaner itself has scattered all that debris behind it, so the brush has really flicked all that. So I'm going to try, we'll just go onto a lower setting. Well, no, actually I won't. I was going to, but it's really already on quite a low setting, so I don't want to risk damaging the, the floor by putting it on the intensive setting. So using the setting that Hoover recommend it's not very successful at cleaning hard floors. Let's see if it fares any better at carpets. Right here we have a right old mess to test the carpet cleaning ability of the Hoover Smart Pets Upright Cleaner. Now in this mess we have a lot of dog hair and it's branded pets so it should deal with that. There's sawdust, there's 
dust, uh, bits of paper, some rice, some larger particles as well, larger bits that might not be able to cope with. And they've been rubbed into the carpet quite thoroughly. So there's a lot of hair, big clumps of hair as well. So we've selected for this particular job the intensive carpet clean setting, which is what it's going to need, I think. So we'll do one forward and backward pass through this mess, see how it copes. I'm thinking it's going to do better on carpet than it did on hard floors, but we'll have to see. Right? Not bad, you can see it's left a little bit at either side, but obviously when you're normally vacuuming you'll be going back and forth and you'll be overlapping your strokes. If we get a bit closer to the carpet, it's left a little piece there. But all in all, that seems pretty impressive. There's a, a definite path through all that mess, and that was a big mess. Unless you're a slob, you normally wouldn't have to cope with that sort of dirt on your carpet. So we'll just finish cleaning up the rest of this, and we'll see what the Hoover Smart is like using its cleaning tools. Well, I'm pretty impressed. It's noisy, which you come to expect from this end of the market, but it really has lifted the pile and I could see the carpet being lifted as I was vacuuming with it. And all the dirt is trapped in that bin there. So, all in all, disappointing so far on hard floors, but on carpets, I can't fault that. Can't fault that performance at all. Right, now we're going to check out the performance of the tools. Now, on this model, we have a hose built in at the back of the machine, but it's not a very long hose and it's not stretchable either so it's not going to reach up your stairs so that's the length of the hose but that's more than adequate for doing your upholstery and your other nooks and crannies the tools you get with this machine include this two-in-one tool which is a dusting tool and then that brush slides off and it becomes a general purpose nozzle for your curtains and upholstery. On the side we've got an extension tube and inside the extension tube you can get it out you have a long crevice tool so that's useful do for doing down the sides of your chairs behind your radiators all those nooks and crannies where you can't reach with your main cleaner. And then because this is the pets version Hoover provide 
this turbo nozzle here with a rotating brush which is supposed to deal with pet hairs. So I think we'll try out to this nozzle now and see what it does on some upholstery. Right, so on this chair we've got a mixture of pet hairs and some dust, little bits of paper. Got some fresh hair, freshly combed off my dog Daisy. It's not really stuck on but uh, it'll give you some idea and we're going to test out the pet hair remover brush now. I fitted it to the end of the tube and we'll just give this a go shall we? Let's move the cleaner a bit closer towards me and we'll see how this performs. Well, that's pretty good. Unlike some turbo nozzles that I've used, the brushes don't actually slow down when you're using it. Often they can be a bit wimpy, and when you're actually using them, you can you can see the brushes slowing, but they remained spinning pretty fast. And yes, it's done its job. So that's thumbs up for pet hair removal on upholstery. Well, we've now got the Hoover smart pets bagless upright vacuum cleaner set up to clean the stairs and I won't clean the stairs with it because I know it'll do a good job um, with that turbo brush but it's not going to reach very far so I'll position it at the bottom of the stairs as Hoover suggests and we'll just see with the turbo at nozzle attached and the extension tube how many steps we'll be able to clean with it First step, obviously no problem. Second step, fine. Third step, yep. Fourth, yes, that's easy. Fifth, yes. And just about you can clean the sixth step. You are pulling on, pulling on the hose a bit. Let's see if I can swivel the hose up anymore. Right, so it's going to clean with the machine at the bottom of the stairs. It's only going to clean six steps. Now an average British staircase is around 12 to 13 steps, so I've still got one, two, last count, one, two, three, four, five, and then there's that uh, half landing there, that's six more steps to clean. So in this case, you've either got to hold the machine with one hand, this is very difficult because I'm holding a camera as well, so it would be a bit easier. It is possible. You can actually support the cleaner, have the cleaner on the step like that, keeping the rotating brush away from the flex and away from the stair. So you can hold it with your hand there, one hand hold there, and you can use your other hand to actually do the cleaning. So, okay if you're strong enough, but if you've got dexterity problems or have trouble lifting anything, although it's quite light, um, you might find it's not very good for your stairs. Now it is possible, of course, to put the cleaner, oops, lazy, at the top of the stairs, but this really is a pretty dangerous thing to do unless you're very, very careful. You can use the machine, because it's not a stretch hose, you don't have that pullback you get with stretch hoses, because if you block the end of a stretch hose, it just wants to pull it back to the machine, and then that will bring the machine crashing down on top of you. So as long as you're careful, and don't stretch the hose, you could do one, two, three, 
Well, you could do three of the stairs from the top safely, but as I say, I wouldn't recommend it because that could come down quite easily and cause some damage to you, the vacuum, or your paintwork. So, although it will clean stairs, it is a bit difficult. So that's the stair cleaning taken care of and the general performance of the cleaner. Let's see how easy it is to empty and maintain. Now obviously it's bagless, so there's no bags to buy. And to empty the dust container, it's a one-handed operation to take the dust container off the cleaner because it's easy enough to reach the release button with your thumb as you're holding the handle. The handle of the dust container also serves as the handle to the vacuum and it's at a comfortable height uh, and the vacuum is quite light and easy to lift. So to empty, just press the release button like that, I'll show you again, and just remove the whole container from your carpet and that is full of rubbish. You do need two hands to empty it into the bin, so once you've taken it over to your dustbin, you need to use your free hand to release the easy open button. Unfortunately, I wasn't blessed with three hands, so I'm going to have to try and do it with one hand. So this is the bin, and this is what it's picked up in that brief demonstration. Give it a bit more of a shake. <laughs> well that was handy. By shaking it, it's closed, it closed itself. Let's try that again. Just shake it. I knew, well you can actually close it by going like that. And then that's closed it so you don't even have to touch it. Although it has left. I assume that's on the outside, yes it is. It's left dust on the outside. So that's what you get for a bagless cleaner. If you want to save money on bags, the emptying isn't always very clean or hygienic. And that's the same with any bagless vacuum cleaner, even the most expensive ones. You will often get dust on the outer container that needs to be wiped off. But that's what we've picked up in the past few minutes. So, very good performance. I would give it hmm, four and a half out of five on carpets, four out of five using the turbo brush, but probably only two out of five for your hard floors because it did tend to spit most of the dirt back out. Right, a few little maintenance tips you need to, to know with this machine, and this goes for many bagless cleaners, especially at this price point. Uh, this bagless cleaner has its HEPA filter inside the bin. These tend to be the ones that need most maintenance. They tend to be the cheapest to buy, but to keep them working efficiently and to make them last more than a few months, you do need to maintain the filter. Obviously empty it frequently. And from time to time, I think Hoover recommend after every five emptyings, you need to clean the filter. And you see at the back, there's a symbol with a padlock, open and closed. So all you do is turn the top to the open section and lift it out and you're left with the bin. You could rinse that if you want to keep the bin nice and clean. If you want to rinse that in water and then thoroughly dry it, it doesn't really make any difference because obviously the first time you use it again it's going to get dirty but if you're storing your machine away for a while and don't want it to build up a musty smell then you could wash that. So here we have the HEPA filter. You see there's already some muck trapped on that little catch there. That catch is to prevent you using the cleaner without the filter in place. It's a little fail-safe catch. So there's a lot of muck. You could just wipe that over. That's the mesh filter that protects the inner HEPA filter. But for a more thorough clean, we can take the filter off. So there's an arrow here, unlock and lock. So we need to turn it to the unlock section. Oops. 
Wait, hang on a minute. There we go. So when that's removed, there's a lot of dirt here. There's a little foamy filter there which you can just rinse under the tap. Make sure it's thoroughly dry before you put it back. And obviously any muck that's left on here, just wipe it with a, a damp cloth um, or a kitchen roll. Again, ensure it's thoroughly dry. Then you're left with this. You see this is a messy job. Obviously I've picked up a lot of, of filth, but this is the sort of mess you would expect to find after a week or so of use or less. This whole filter comes apart. It might be difficult to do one-handed. But this, let's pop it here between my legs. I didn't check the instructions before. There we go, just pulls off. There we are. Will be easier for you because you won't be holding the video camera. This part, very easy, rinse that under the tap and that will be dry quite quickly. It's just your initial mesh which prevents some of the larger particles. But already, this cleaner was brand new when I started using it. That filter is dirty. So you can tap it, preferably not on a nice clean carpet. As you can see, all this dust is coming off. So you could do that once a week if you really want to keep your machine operating efficiently and then give this a thorough rinse in warm water, no detergent, but then you have to make sure it is 100% dry before putting it back into the cleaner because if it's got any moisture in it, that moisture will find its way into the motor and ruin your vacuum cleaner. So bear in mind, these types of bagless cleaners that have this type of filter in, Hoover make them, Vax make them, there are other brands, tend to be the cheaper brands, they take a lot to look after if you want them to clean efficiently all the time. Obviously the more money you pay, if you want a Dyson, they don't have this sort of filter and their filters require less maintenance, but they cost considerably more money. So if you can't afford a Dyson, bear in mind you will need to keep the machine clean if you want it to last. The other filter in this machine here is the motor exhaust filter. Not quite as important to keep clean. This is the last defence before the air exits the machine. A lot of this will be carbon dust from the motor. Or well, it's not too bad, you know, it's quite clean still. But that also is washable by hand. And again, make sure it's thoroughly dry before placing it back into the cleaner. So there we have the mess caused by a bagless machine. If you want, if you're on a budget, you can buy a budget price bagged cleaner. Although you do have to buy bags, yes, you don't have all this to clean out. You will have a filter, but the filter will stay a lot cleaner in a bagged cleaner because the bag is the main filter. And technology has come on, bags are better than they used to be. You can get now uh, fabric type bags or fleecy type material bags which do filter the air better and don't block the suction off like the old paper bags do. But at the low end of the market you might find that you can only buy paper bags which means you do need to replace them frequently but it just means moving, removing a paper bag, a full bag from your cleaner and binning it, putting a new bag in. There's very little of this mess you have to deal with. But all in all, I'm going to have to now clean all this mess up that I've made. But all in all, for what I paid anyway, £39.50, it's a bargain. Even at the normal price of £80, I'm pretty pleased with this machine. It seems quite solid, it's noisy, the flex is quite short, the hose is short. It does emit quite a plasticky, chemically smell when it's being used, but it is brand new. That might fade in time. But, you know, it seems pretty strong and it's pretty good. I'll just show you underneath. There's another maintenance thing you might have to do. And while we're underneath, we can 
see a bit of the muck that's been left from cleaning. Obviously this uses a belt. To access the belt you need to undo the screws. This has all be in the instruction book but there are six screws to undo on this machine. One, two, three, four, five and where's number six? Well it only looks like five to me but in the instruction book it says six but uh, I think it's five. When you've removed the screws this base plate will come off including this part here and then you'll have access to the brush roll and to the belt and you can buy spare brush rolls like this complete assemblies like that direct from Hoover or the other suppliers that will supply you with a brush if you need one and the belts of course you'll need to replace the belt before you have to replace the brushes and that's quite a simple job to do I might do some maintenance videos um, a bit later on in my uh, YouTube channel so stay tuned for those if you need any basic maintenance tips which will apply to a lot of vacuum cleaners I can't go into specific models all the time because there's so many different models about but uh, they're all fairly similar most of them the way that you would maintain them and, and fit belts if you need to fit a belt a lot of cleaners now have lifetime belts that shouldn't need replacing but at this price point you should be expected to have to replace the belt so it's always a good idea just to get a pack of belts in, they normally come in a, a twin pack just get one in, keep it in your cupboard and then when your belt does snap or it might stretch and you'll find it's not brushing the carpet like it used to, it's not picking up you will need to put a new belt in so having one in the cupboard saves you having to search for a belt when you need it so I would advise getting soon after you've bought the machine, buy yourself some belts right, I'm going to have to clear up all this mess I hope you've enjoyed the video on the Hoover Smart Pets Bagless Sump Pipe Vacuum Cleaner. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.